They did it. They really did it. SpaceX has conducted a single engine static fire for Starship Flight 10, Ship 37, on the orbital launch mount. On the launch pad. This is incredible because just a month ago, Ship 36 exploded during a test at Massey's, which destroyed that entire testing site. SpaceX was able to adapt the orbital launch mount to conduct a static fire, which is probably one of the most MacGyver moves I've ever seen SpaceX make. And thanks to this video from NSF, we can see that single engine static fire. Now, of course, they'll still need to do another static fire of all six engines, and that will come next. Now, this first static fire from the launch pad was actually supposed to be on Wednesday, July 30th, but they had to delay it until today. And here's another view from Lab Padre Space of this static fire. <laughs> And remember, this is the first standalone ship static fire on the launch mount. So it's pretty impressive that they're able to do this and it's making an August launch for SpaceX looking more and more likely. We know that SpaceX wants to finally have a successful V2 ship flight and they have those two remaining ships basically almost ready to go. So check out this wonderful photo from Interstellar Gateway. Go follow them on X of SpaceX's Ship 37 atop the modified orbital launch mount, which has now successfully had a static fire of a single engine and will have more likely tomorrow. So of course, I'll keep you apprised of any new details, but I, I did want to share this because yes, it finally happened. And there's some other SpaceX news as well regarding Crew 11 and also the retirement of a beloved landing zone one. And unfortunately, clouds got in the way of launching Crew 11 today. I think it's really innate in our human nature to want to keep exploring and to keep pushing boundaries. Everything that we do in space is ultimately for Earth and for the human species. We are having a lot of good experiments on orbit, making new medicines. Uh, that is actually good for everybody. By understanding how to live and work in space like we have with the International Space Station, we can now become a multi-planetary species by having bases on the moon and bases on Mars. И выполнение полетов в космос, на мой взгляд, важно, потому что в конечном счете необходимо человечеству будет двигаться в дальний космос для того, чтобы открывать новые миры, исследовать новые и новые горизонты. For me, it's a really compelling goal to go farther and farther afield in space and pushing our boundaries as a human species that way, learning more about our own home planet as we try to go farther. We've been going and living aboard the International Space Station for 25 years. We're ready to make the next steps. We're ready to go to the moon. We're ready to go to Mars. We're ready to explore the solar system. We understand the effects of what life in space does to the human body. And we need to continue those studies. We need to continue getting ready and get ready and go to the moon and Mars. And that's why it's important to go to space. SpaceX had to stand down from Thursday's launch of the Falcon 9 with Dragon due to cloud cover at the launch site. SpaceX is now targeting Friday, August 1st for the launch of Dragon and Crew 11 to the space station. This launch was scrubbed just over a minute until launch, so it really was at the last minute, but better safe than sorry. So for those in Florida looking to hear that sonic boom, they're going to have to wait. Now, this mission consists of NASA astronauts Zena Cardman and Mike Fink. Probably saying that last name wrong. There's also a JAXA astronaut, Kimia Yui, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Platonov. And this, as I'm sure you can tell, Crew 11 is the 11th crew rotation and the 12th overall astronaut launch by SpaceX for NASA. And being delayed by a day is not a big deal because these astronauts will be spending six to eight months on the ISS. And did you know that this Crew 11 launch is also special because it will mark the end of SpaceX using Landing Zone 1 at Kennedy Space Center. So during a recent press conference, Bill Gerstenmeyer with SpaceX, formerly with NASA, 
said the landing of B-1094 or the booster that will be used for the Crew-11 launch will be the final use of Landing Zone 1, but they'll continue to use Landing Zone 2 for now. According to Spaceflight Now, that site, Launch Complex 13 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, is being transitioned to a joint use by Via Space and Phantom Space. Via is aiming for its first launch in 2026. But yes, this is due to SpaceX's lease expiring and a changing of hands. And Landing Zone 1, or LZ-1, is a very special site for SpaceX. On December 22, 2015, SpaceX successfully launched and landed a Falcon 9 rocket booster for the first time. And yes, this was at LZ-1. So with SpaceX's lease for the pad ending, SpaceX is building new landing zones at Slick 40. Now, like I mentioned, they plan to use LZ-2 in the meantime, and of course, they always have the option of the drone ships. But it definitely is the end of an era for SpaceX at LZ-1. So thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel, Ellie in Space. It's completely free, and I'll see you in the next video.